So what would that mean for us to grow up to look like? What, what does it mean? Well, the next, that's found in the next verse, verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. Why does he want us to grow up? Because he, he doesn't want us to be children. Why? Because children are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. One of the telltale signs of these last days is that there will be deceivers who are themselves deceived. They think they're telling you the truth, but they're actually deceiving you. And it says right here that if you are mature, if you grow up and you're not a child anymore, tossed to and fro, and that the enemy, that you won't be cared about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. Because there are, he says in these last days there are going to be doctrines of devils. He says all these things, seducing spirits, trying to pull people in this way and that way. Listen, we can't be pulled off into tangents and off into distractions. We've got to be focused. We've got one job here. We've, we've got a, a purpose and a job. We, ha, we have to realize that we are supposed to grow up in him and grow up into him. That's our purpose here in this sense. But now our, our, the way we do this is by loving God and loving people. You cannot grow up without loving God and loving people. Now, and now loving, what that means is you can't grow up if you don't love God enough to keep his commandments and that you love people enough to do unto them as you would have done unto you. So if you were sick, what would you want done to you? Well, I want somebody to come and lay hands. There you are. You just put yourself in the ministry. You just commissioned yourself into the ministry. You don't need a call. You don't need somebody to call you out and say, oh, I see, thus saith the Lord, you're going to be a great evangelist. You're going to be the... You don't need any of that. Matter of fact, the more words you get, all that tells spiritual people is, that's how hard-headed you are. Because you have to keep having God tell you over and over again. When he's already written you a letter and said, here's my will, do it. Good morning. <laughs> Amen? Amen? This is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be growing up into Christ in everything. Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking about what that means because that ain't, that ain't all fun and games. Growing up, there's some stuff that you're going to have to learn. You're going to, listen, one of the hardest things to learn is when you are right and they're wrong and they're calling you wrong and you want to set them straight and you have to learn to shut your mouth and just let God vindicate you. That's a hard lesson to learn. So, what does that mean? Well, how are we going to do that? Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. So what does spiritual maturity look like? Understand, the whole purpose of today is to tell you to grow up. This is a year you get to grow up. Amen. I'll do everything I can to help you, but you've got to do your part. I can't do it for you. You know, if I keep bottle feeding you, if I keep feeding you milk instead of meat, in that sense, you understand that you'll never grow. You'll survive, but you won't thrive. So at some point, you have to decide to start chewing the meat. Amen? Amen. So... Spiritual maturity, what, what would it look like? Well, remember Jesus had the message, but Paul had the mission and the method to spread the, and the mission. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, it says, Of whom we have many things to say, talking about Melchizedek, and hard to be uttered. They're hard to say. Why? Seeing you are dull of hearing. Christians can become dull of hearing. They can lock into cruise control and just go to church and hear a word. No, oh, amen, praise the Lord. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored, yes. And then you walk out and I don't know what we're going to do about that bill. I don't know how we're going to... Wait, I thought you were blessed and highly favored. <laughs> you see, we've got to get past the church mentality and move into Christ mentality. Amen? He says, for when for the time you ought to be teachers. Hmm. He spoke to them and said, he was telling the whole group, You've been here long enough that you ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. See, now you know why I had you lift your hands, how long you've been listening to this message. It wasn't just for me to get an idea. 
It was so that I could come back and point and say, look, you've been here long enough. You should know. You should be teaching. You should be sharing this, not just feeding all the time. Why? Because I can't do this by myself. Amen? Amen? The city's too big. The state's too big. The nation's too big. The world's too big. Jesus needs all hands on deck Amen. in this, especially this coming year. He says, for, now get this. He says, you've been around long enough. You ought to be teaching others, but you have need that somebody teach you again the basic principles. And then he says, and it becomes such as I have need of milk and not strong meat. In other words, you can't even eat strong meat. You got to go back to milk again, which was what? The basics. He says, but strong meat. Now watch this. Well, let me go back to verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a baby. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, mature. See people, oh, we want, we want a good message. Oh, he brings a good message. I can only bring the message to the degree that you are mature enough to receive it. Does that make sense? Even those who by reason of use, not by reason of revelation, by anointings, by blessings, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. What does that mean? That means for you to grow, there's stuff you've got to do. You've got to have your senses exercised. That's God. That's not. Not tossed to and fro. Well, maybe we ought to do this. Well, I don't know. Maybe it ought to be this way. No, that's a child tossed to and fro. This is the word. This is the word of God. This is the way of God. This is the will of God. But what about, mm, nah, talk to the hand. Right? I know that's old school. I don't know what he says anymore, but still. But guess what? You got the point, didn't you? Why? Because it's not about, well, what about? Well, what about this? Oh, I heard this. Oh, I heard this thing. Yeah, you're going to hear all kinds of new things. And guess what? None of them beat the old thing, which is the word of God. Because the word of God ain't new. Ain't nothing new in this word. If it's new, it ain't true. And if it's true, it ain't new. Amen. 